There will be no salvation. The gods are dead. Hell is frozen over as Cockatus has been sent down. Konami will not do an emergency ban. And there are no supermen coming to save us. But you have the power to clap anime cheeks and become a god yourself. But in this video, I'll give you the tools, the weapons you need to take down a degenerate and disgusting meta. YT Dan Duel Links is sponsored by These Dank Duelists. Support the channel directly by becoming a member. What's going on my boys? YT Dan back at it again with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. We're going to be getting in there talking about the metagame, what we need to do to counter it as rogue duelists, and what type of bull that we have to look forward to until we get new characters and new cards coming up later on this month, later on this year. So before I get into it, my boys, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe because I'm making new content every single So day. as you guys already know, the meta game has shifted and there's so much old stuff that has come back into prominence. It's just not even funny. We just had a release of a new mini box that has had a 1% effect on the meta game, which has just basically increased the degeneracy of older decks. So right now we are dealing with an invoked meta that runs a lot of hand traps and back row. And honestly, invoked would not be a big problem by itself but it's the hand traps in the back row that actually gives it power. And of course, outside of that, we're dealing with the Sartorius builds, but there is one unifying factor in between these two decks. Both decks does a lot of targeting and a lot of them have hand traps that stall. So the 1%, as you know, that has given, uh, I would say some relevance to this new main box is the Battle and Boxer Veil which basically is a hand trap for protection, can stop an attack, put a monster on the board, and help people go into the play of the Diamond Dire Wolf. Now, Diamond Dire Wolf's effect allows you to tribute a Beast Warrior monster or Beast monster. He can tribute himself to destroy one card on the field. And this is an okay card. It's a decent little play, but coming off of something like this could be devastating. So Diamond Dire Wolf is definitely one of those cards that you gotta look out for. Then we also have Belize the Squad. Tributes the monster, targets an opponent's card, destroys it. We've got Karma Cut. Discard a card, target a monster, banish it. Banish more copies of that monster if it has the same name. Palazoic Canadia. We're gonna go ahead and target a monster, put it face down. Fiendish Chain. We're gonna target an effect monster, negate its effect, and it can't attack. Regeki Break. We're gonna discard a card and destroy a card on the field as you can see each card has the effect of targeting and also most of the cards have a one cost um i guess payment as you just look at all the cards like regeki break karma cut belisa squad diamond dire wolf they all require at least one resource and if you think about it if you use diamond dire wolf it's going to cost you one resource plus another level four and this monster, technically three cards. So you might wonder, how can a deck afford to go into such deficits? How can they afford to discard so many cards? How can they afford to lose so much and still come out victorious? Well, we already know about um, Fire Reload using Volcanic Shell. Konami failed to nerf that because they went ahead and uh, stop reload, but they didn't do anything about the new skill fire reload. It's like they really like this. They really like the combo, and they wanted to see it played more. So it's now being played more. You already know about Sartorius and his ridiculous coin flip bullshit deck that also runs a plethora of targeting back row and head judging and an omni negate. So there's only one way out. There's only one way to stop this meta. And it is to play a deck that cannot be targeted. 
Now, Konami already went and froze over hell by taking taking Cockatus and pushing him down. Pushed him down into the ninth circle, froze hell over, and now, now the people down there got something to deal with. But up here, in purgatory, we have to find a way to survive. So right now, Exceeds Veil. This is a terrible card, and let me tell you why. It provides protection for Exceeds monsters only, and it says that monsters cannot be targeted, period. Okay? You would think that that's cool on the surface, but protection for a monster saying it cannot be targeted, for a card that cannot be searched out, that must be drawn, and can be Cosmic Cyclone easily, is ass. This is a very bad card. But Konami knows that the only way to defeat this meta is to go not target. So they put this in there. This is the bone that they've given us. And, and clearly, you can't even make soup with this bone. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and just discard this card. Discard it to the graveyard. Banish it from your memory because you don't need it. Because this card right here is no C stealth attack. Even with a C stealth attack that can be searched out from the deck, that is also a super rare card. This card comes with Citadel Well. Citadel Well prevents targeting for one shot. And then also you can dodge a target with one C stealth attack, but you gotta survive. So when it comes to non-targeting decks, I wouldn't put C stealth attack. I wouldn't put Citadel Well up at the highest upper echelons. Let's look at more cards that don't target. Obelisk the Tormentor, really good card. 4,000, 4,000 with the effect to destroy all opponent's monsters by tributing two monsters. I would say, great, go ahead and run your Obelisk the Tormentor. It can stop Purgatorius, and yes, I'll say his name all crazy every time I say it. He doesn't deserve respect. It can stop Purgatoria. He can stop that beast. He can go up to 3,500 with and Alistair, 4,500 with two Alistairs, and he's running over Obelisk. Obelisk costs three cards to summon, and by summoning Obelisk, real talk, you might not even get the chance to get Obelisk out on the field because there's way too many ways to stop him before he is actually summoned. You have to assemble three monsters to summon this card, and that's damn near impossible with cards like Ballista Squad, Karma Cut, Kanadia, Fiendish Chain, Regeki Break, and I didn't add Floodgate, because Floodgate doesn't target. But people play three of that anyway, and you already knew that. So, Obelisk the Tormentor, he's out. So we've already lost Obelisk, we've lost Citadel Well, we've lost Sea Stealth Attack. What's less? What, what else is left? Dance Princess of the Necroz. You ain't playing Necroz. But this card can prevent all cards from being targeted. Be gone. All your Necroz cards, be gone. Nobody's playing Necroz. You're not playing Necroz. I feel you. Now, Lord of D for the Blue Eyes deck. You're not going to play your Lord of D. There are other options, but very similar to the Obelisk problem. You can clap Lord of D easily. Very similar to the Exceeds Veil problem. He cannot be searched easily gone not an option look what we have left from our box of fire hazy flame and brotherhood konami is really pushing us by releasing that rage volcanic box to play some hazy flame or some brotherhood but here's the problem your brotherhood deck right here could work could be great in theory being able to lock down your opponent's back row using cards like Fire Formation Goka is a really good, interesting concept. But at the end of the day, you have to get out Brotherhood Swallow before you can get your non-target effects going. And before you get that out, if you didn't have this card, which is searchable, by the way, with other Brotherhood cards like, I believe, this card. Yes, I believe Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Leopard and a few other cards can search out these different Fire Fist spells and traps, but it's not fast enough. It's too slow, which is preventing people from actually winning. Also, it's a fire deck feeding into Purgatoria. 
Purgatoria gets even more strength because you chose to try to play Fire Fist. You're a little too slow, and Invoke Neos has already clapped your cheeks before you begun to shuffle. So get this deck out of here. Worthless. Cannot be used. And now here comes the fabled Hazy Flame. The deck that I love. The deck that, that is my claim to fame. My favorite deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, period. My favorite deck. This deck on its own, excluding the bait, excluding the bait of Hazy Flame Bossel Trace, can work against this meta. You cannot target it by any of these cards. It cannot fall victim to these cards. You have an easy way to summon it by using Battle and Boxer Veil or other special summon cards. But what's the problem with the Hazy Flame? It's fire. Opens you up to Pargatari ass. And on top of that, it's weak. And you can't use any kind of boosting abilities. So what do you have to play? What are your options? Beast Rising, defensive spells. But running back row is tough because on top of effects like Ballista Squad, on top of the effects like Regeki Break, People can play Cosmic Cyclone, Night Beam, Galaxy Cyclone. Your back row can easily be destroyed and removed. So Hazy Flame can't win on its own because it needs a lot of support. And if you try to go into the ultimate monster in the midst of your Xyz transformation, before you can reach the ultimate, you will be Karma Cut. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, unfortunately, it hurts me to remove these hazy beasts for now. But we got a few options, my boy. A few options that I think that are worth talking about. A few options that I believe are truly freaking worthy. Now, two cards, two decks I want to talk about. I want to talk about the Blue Eyes deck, and I want to talk about Luna Light. Luna Light has a fantastic OTK. You already know they can use Luna Light Cat Dancer to get in there for game. If your opponent has failed to put any back row down and they put a monster in attack position, but easily can be cheesed by Battling Boxer Veil vale, um, or Karibo or something like that. So you got to be careful for something like that. But also we have Lunar Light Sable Dancer. Now this has to be one of the strongest monsters that you can summon with a reasonable, decent engine that also has protection on, on its summon because you have Lunar Light Crimson Fox in the graveyard that can negate a card that targets. So, so this deck actually is probably the best deck that you can play against the meta right now is Luna Lights because you have protection from targeting, a really strong OTK that's reliable, and a big monster that cannot be targeted. Also, this monster can go to 6,000 points if you meet the requirements, which is pretty good. Basically, you can banish this card in the graveyard and then target a fusion monster you control. It gains 3,000 attack points. If you, have to, if you summon this card twice, 6,000. If you summon out your cat dancer and you had to banish this monster, that's going to be 5,400. Pretty good. So I would say Lunar Light, definitely one of the best choices. Now, why do I say Blue Eyes White Dragon? We have the Azure Silver Eyes Dragon. On the turn, this card is Synchro Summoned. You cannot target or destroy um dragon type monsters with uh card effects or normal dragon monster with card effects basically your blue eyes white dragon and if you were able to summon this by any means you probably had dragon spirit of white on the field which allowed you to to play into this and you probably had um maybe no i'm sorry not dragon spirit of white you probably had your spirit dragon on the field and you used dragon spirit of white beforehand to banish the back row. I think Blue Eyes also has a really strong chance to fight back against this meta. 
But there is one more deck that I believe that is truly great. A deck that I truly enjoy playing and I'm having a lot of fun with. It's called Archfiend's Call. This monster, its name is Summon Skull. So you're playing a Summon Skull deck. First off, you're getting deep into the nostalgia. Second, you're clapping anime cheeks with a deck that a lot of people have never even seen before. And third, this monster floats. And you can play one card to synchro summon into this. One card. By playing what grows in the graveyard, you can use the Angel Trumpeter to bring Dark Verger out to summon this card. And you combine it with cards like Battle Tuned, and also you got tech cards like Makiyu the Magical Mist, which on a boosted summon skull can clear board and does not target. Destroy all monsters your opponent controls with defense less than or equal to the attack of the monster that you targeted, which is gonna be this card. And he can probably be at 4,400 using Battle Tune. So right now, if you were to ask me, YT Dan, what is the hope for the rogue deck? What is the hope for the rogue style? I'm telling you right now, it's Archfiend's Call and it's Luna Lights. We are at war. And no mercy and no quarter will be shown for us. If you dare to wage battle against the meta and wave the flag of the rogue style, you better come prepared. And you better come not targeted. Don't give them anything. Don't play the fire monsters, allowing them to use purgatory ass. Don't do it. It's not the time for that. It's the time to wreck this low IQ, click yes meta, and punish them with powerful monsters that they have never seen before. Check out the live stream that I just did with the Summon Skull or any of the other videos with the Summon Skull. And we'll be getting in there with some Luna Lights and clapping some anime cheeks all night later on today. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you for watching this video, my boy. This is a degenerate meta, but I'm gonna need you to hold fast to non-targetable monsters to never miss. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, keep it dank.